I had so much mango, awesome fun! Hello YouTube friends and neighbors, today I wanted to tell you about the 2017 New York Comic Con. I'll tell you everything I did, everywhere I went, and I want to show you my haul. I bought way too much stuff. <laughs> I told myself, this year I'm not going to buy anything, I'm just going to film boobs, so I'm going to get a lot of boobs filmed. And then I kept on seeing cool things I wanted to buy. So I wanted to share with you everything I got. Now, the first day I went there, I wanted to make sure I got my favorite booths filmed. You know, the Kotobukiya Funko booth. Now, I didn't really get a full, like, Funko booth tour because in New York Comic Con, I'm sure it's the same as San Diego Comic Con, but basically it's just a counter with a bunch of pops behind them, and it's kind of hard... You can't get into the booth to film it. So let me show you. I just did a quick walk by in the morning on my way to the next booth so you guys could kind of see what it looks like. So here I am walking past the booth. Now, while at the con, I met a bunch of you guys. I think seven of you guys came up to me and be like, hey, you're that guy on YouTube, or I watch you on YouTube, or I love your channel, I love your videos. And I really enjoyed that. It was really fun meeting you guys. Now, sadly, I only was able to film one person who I got to meet. Everyone else bumped into me when my battery was dead or I didn't have my camera set up. But hopefully next year, I can capture more of you guys. So here's one person I got to meet. Hey guys, this is Christian. We're hanging out at Comic Con. You yeah. find anything awesome today? Uh, I found a couple of things. What did you find? What's the best um, thing you found today? I want to say probably the Joker Pop, a Walking Exclusive. Oh, it's cool. Like a black suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That came out what, a year ago? Yeah, yeah. 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 I've been looking for it. None so of the new stuff though. Right? Yeah, stuff. I didn't win the lottery space. So. Yeah, I no. mean, I got a lot of the stuff off the um, place itself, the shops. You ordered it last night? And I went to some of the stores. Oh, some of the stores. Yeah, Barnes and Noble. I, got I think Toys R Us was pretty uh, easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the Superman there. Did you get anything from Fugitive Toys? I think they were pretty easy. Um, to get they were good. I got the Yellow Lantern Batman. Very cool. I'm, I'm waiting until tomorrow. I'm waiting for some cash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was really nice to meet you. Same. Thank you. So that was really awesome. I really enjoyed the conversations I had with everyone. I really enjoyed meeting everyone. My favorite thing to do is just ask me, hey, would, have you got anything cool at the Comic-Con? How's your Comic-Con? Most people just told me, you know, this story or that story of what they got, what they found. And it was really cool. I love meeting other collectors and just hearing their collector story. I think one younger girl, she was a little bit shy when she was me. She's like, do you do YouTube? And that was about the whole conversation. But that's okay. I'm shy too, honestly. I mean, if you meet me anywhere else, but like Comic Con or somewhere where I'm in my element, I'm I'm lost. <laughs> I'm bewildered. I'm a bewildered person. But if you see me at Comic Con and you want to say hi, I'm never. You know, if I'm filming a booth, you can stop me for five minutes. I can talk to you for for five or ten minutes because I'm happy to meet you and I think it's a great experience. I I got plenty of. Day, I mean, this year I got four day passes, so I had plenty of time to go around and film everything. And uh, well, actually, I feel like I could have filmed more, but by the end of the day, you're so tired, you don't want to do anything else. <laughs> and like the the Bluefin Tomashi Nation booth that thing has got so much on display so that it always intimidates me but i love the booth i love all the the gundam robots all the different toys the star wars ships everything they have on display but it takes me like an hour and a half to film the whole booth so i'm always i waited for the second or third day to get that done <laughs> okay so day one i filmed a, a couple booths and there was two things I wanted to look at. I was looking for the white outfit Black Widow from 3A. I couldn't find the 3A booth. They didn't have their own booth. They were kind of sharing with someone. So, and I have a booth tour. I'm going to post that. Actually, I have 20 more booth tour videos. So I'm going to be posting as many as I can in the next week. Sorry about the spam. But I like doing the booth tours. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I like going back and watching them because it's fun. It's like you're actually there and you can see everything on display. You can see what you want. And so I like doing it for you guys. I know, I know a lot of my audience is Funko fans and they like the Funko videos, so it's not so much Funko. But 
you know, it's fun. I enjoy it. So as long as I'm happy and having a fun time, I think you guys will enjoy it too a little bit. And plus, it's for everyone who can't get to the Comic-Con but wants to see the booths and the toys and everything on display. I like doing the videos for you guys so that you can sort of get the experience yourself without actually being there. Because I know not everyone can afford it or they can make it. So day one, I was looking for the uh, 3A Black Widow in the white outfit. I couldn't find that booth. And so the second thing I wanted to see was I wanted to go see the artist Jeff Darrow. Now, Artist Alley is one of my favorite places to go to at Comic-Con. Because you get the face-to-face -face meet a lot of really great comic creators. Artists, uh, I think sometimes there's writers there. And you get this meet them. They're usually just set up at a table. And you can buy prints from them. You can buy books from them. You can buy art from them. You can bring a comic book to them and they'll sign it so i really want to see jeff darrow because i saw he was releasing um i don't think the book itself was limited but he had like a limited edition print and a piece of artwork you could choose if you bought his book so that's the first sh place i actually went to buy something so i got the really cool shallon cowboy who will stop the rain book now i don't think this book itself is limited edition but with it he had a limited edition print one out of a hundred for the New York Comic Con. So I thought that was really cool. And he also let you pick out a original work of art. So I grabbed the Ultraman with a monkey. I love his robots. So anytime I can get one of his robots, original artwork, awesome. This whole package was 75 bucks. I think it's such a great deal. I mean, on eBay, original artwork like this from him will be 75 to 100 bucks by its own. The print and the book, oh, so awesome. Now he hadn't signed the print so I got him to sign the print. He's like, oh man, I usually sign all of them. I mean, he didn't sign the original artwork. So he's like, oh no, I normally sign it. So I got that. And then the print I picked out was the one that he hadn't signed. <laughs> so I had to have him sign the print. But it was cool because I actually got to see him sign it. And then I opened up the book and I went down later and I had him sign the book as well. Right there. I had him sign the book and draw a little monkey. I thought it was really cool. And the thing is, he was signing every book he was selling. So <laughs> I think I was the only fan that day that actually had to get him to sign everything. <laughs> awesome. I was so happy. That was the main thing I really wanted because I follow him on Facebook and I knew he was going to have that there. I think that's the second or third time I've met him. I always like buying something from him at Comic-Con because he's one of my favorite artists. So as I was walking around, I was thinking, oh, I really didn't want to spend any money. So and I only had like $150 for the first day. So I wanted to be limited, and I was walking around Artist Alley to see any artists. I wanted to go see Arthur Adams, but he had like 30 people around him, and I just, I wanted to film booths, so I didn't want to wait. But then I saw uh, Sabine Rich, and I like her stuff. I just recently discovered that she was the colorist for a lot of, of J. Scott Campbell's stuff. So she was there, no one was at her table. I was like, oh, cool. So I was looking at her artwork, talking with her. She was really friendly. And she had her Sirens of Art books out for sale. Now, I actually wanted to get a copy of this, and when I looked online, I couldn't find where she was selling it. And on eBay, people were asking for like 60, 70 bucks. So she had it for 30 bucks. I was like, oh, awesome. And she signed it. So that's the cool thing with Artist Alley is you, even if you buy, you know, the books, you, you pay full price for the books, you're getting an autograph with it. So that's really cool. And just, it's really cool because it has a bunch of her original artwork just inside the book. Very beautiful book. I, oh, I love her steampunk stuff. So cool. Uh, Wonder Woman. Really cool stuff. I got that book from her for 30 bucks. I almost, she had some original artwork. She had some like sketches for 100, actual printed pay, full pages for like 600. Uh, one day, if I had more money, I probably would have bought a few more pieces. But the book, side book, really happy with that. I love books. I love just being able to flip it open and check out some artwork whenever I'm in the mood to look at it. I enjoy that much more than looking up the images online. I feel like having the actual physical thing is just so much more enjoyable. I mean, check out that steampunk. Such cool artwork. I love it. So I went back upstairs and I filmed a ton of booths the first day. Uh, I don't remember what order they I was filming in, but I was making sure I got like Kota Bikia the first day. Uh, I did the little Funko Pass as you saw. And I checked out, I, I forget, there was a, I checked out as many of my favorite booths as I could. And then I got nervous because I actually won the lottery for the Lego booth. I didn't win the Funko booth, but I won the Lego booth. So I was like, oh, ass. I didn't have a, <laughs> I didn't wear a watch. I didn't have a phone on me. I didn't have any way to tell the time. So I had to keep asking people like, do I have time? Do I have time? <laughs> so I, uh, I looked around. I actually found one booth where the guy had some cool vintage stuff I really wanted. So I asked him prices of things and I decided, you know what? I'm going to think about it. 
And on day two, I actually went back and bought some stuff. I went to the very far edge where Warner Brothers usually sets up the costumes and the props and the things from their newest movie so that you can try to see them. I want to see what they had. And they had all the Justice League costumes in these really cool cases. I'll be doing that video in a couple of days. And then they had uh, a counter with a bunch of like the Warner Brothers toys. They had the Lego Joker Mansion that I showed last week from the TTPM event. And they had some DC Superhero Girl stuff. But the one thing that caught my eye was in the bottom of the case, they had these mini, mini, mini hats. These are perfect. They're a little bit big on the pull-up doll, but that's kind of what I was expecting it. I absolutely fell in love with it. So I, I meant, took a mental note of the booth that they were for sale and I hunted them down and they were 20 bucks a piece and buy three get one free so i almost bought four of them but i decided you know i was this was before the lego booth so i knew i had a, just a little teeny you know i wanted to make sure i didn't run out of money just in case i needed it for lego so i ended up buying one just the wonder woman cap it's so cool though i love it i was trying to think i think it's a little bit too big for a funko pop but i love mini hats like that especially it's really if you look at it it's made like a real hat it's high quality but miniature i love it awesome so I won the Lego lottery. I had no idea what they had available. I didn't know if they had more than one item available. So I was trying not to spend my money because I wanted to make sure I had enough for the Lego booth. So I finally, time came to go wait in line. I was waiting in line. I asked the guys like, am I guaranteed to get one? Because I'm so used to Funko where like they sell out all the rest stuff. And basically they only had one item available at the Comic-Con that anyone who won the lottery would get it. So let me show you guys. It was this really cool Star Wars Boba Fett Brickheads figure with the Han and the Carbonite. Oh, so happy to get that. It was 40 bucks at the con. At first, it was like 150 to 200 eBay. Now it's down to about 100. Not selling it though. I wanted it for my collection. I love Legos and these are really cool. So I'm so happy that I won that. No, it was a little tricky. When I got to the line, the line was going pretty quick and I just saw that they were charging people's debit cards and they kept on saying like, get your double card out, get your debit card out, make sure you have your debit card out. I was like, oh, crap i only had cash on me i didn't have a debit card or the debit card i had on me had like ten dollars on it so i wasn't i like bringing cash with me so it kind of prevents me from overspending at comic-con so i had enough cash but i didn't have so i was like i was getting really really nervous so i got to the head of the line i was like listen i i, I won the lottery i only have cash and the guy's like well you know you could kind of ask other people if they'll charge it i'm like ah oh. I feel kind of bad doing that bad. I'm not one of those people that kind of go up like in the Funko booth. I don't go to the line and start asking people for stuff. Unless it's someone I know. Then I'll ask them. But that's that's just me. I feel nervous talking to strangers. So he said, all right, my boss is over that way. Go over there and talk to him. So I went over to his boss and he's like, well, you can, most people today have been, you know, asking other people. And I just said, you know, I'm very uncomfortable asking strangers, kind of begging them if I can use a card. I kind of, I won the lottery. I don't want to miss out. And uh, I was kind of sad about that. And so he's like, you know what? All right, you got 40 bucks cash? I'm like, yes, I've got 40 bucks cash. He said, okay, I'll let you charge my card. So basically I went back to the front of the line. Uh, I had to wait a couple of minutes and then the boss came out. He charged his card, I gave him 40 bucks. I got my Lego set. Oh, so happy. The guys at Legos are really awesome. So I'm so happy to get that. So first day, pretty cool. I got some original artwork, I got a Lego thing. Then at the end of the day, I saw, uh, I didn't think I was going to get any Funko stuff. I didn't win the lottery. I didn't see, I walked by the Funko booth a couple times. I didn't see anyone I knew. And so I was just like, ah, oh, I'm not going to get anything. But then at the end of the day, I saw they had a standby line. I didn't get in at first because they had closed it off. And I was like, oh, I don't wait. But I came back like half an hour later and it was open. So I got in line and I was able to pick up a few things. I was so stoked. I thought I was not going to buy anything. So first I got one of my top wants, the Dolores from Westworld. So happy to get that. She was definitely on my list of maybe like top 10 ones I really, really wanted. All right, then I got the, the Harry Potter Luna where she's in her in her lion mane. Oh, that's also no one I really wanted because you guys know I collect the rock candies. I really like the rock candies and she was, I believe, the only rock candy this year for New York Comic Con. So really, really wanted her. So stoked to get her. Uh, then I got the Dig Dug. I wasn't going to buy any of the 8-bits, but I love retro games, especially stuff from the 80s. And Dig Dug is actually a game I enjoy, or I, I have in the past. When I was a kid, I played a ton of it. And maybe like five years ago, I played a ton of it again for like three or four days. So I decided, oh, the Dig Dug's there. All right, let's get them. And then I got Maximilian from the Black Hole. I love 70s sci-fi. And the black hole ones were two I really, really wanted. So 
I got Maximilian. I was so happy that they actually had them available. I thought the Toy Tokyo ones I wouldn't be able to get. I thought people would buy them out, but they had a lot left over at the end of the day. I was actually kind of surprised. And then I looked on eBay and they're going for like $75. So it, it's like the demand online is a lot higher than the actual how many they had in the Comic-Con. It was kind of weird to me. But I also got Vincent. Oh, so happy to get those. Sadly, at the end of the day, though, I had all... I forgot to put pop pr protectors on them. I brought, like, 12 pop protectors with me just in case. But sadly, at the end of the day, I saw a really cool cosplayer. I was like, oh, let me get my camera out and take a video. And I bent down to get my camera and went crunch right on top of the box. If you can see right there, it's, like, kind of crunchy. Uh, so I was a little disappointed. That. I'm still really happy to have the pop, but I was kind of upset that I had wrecked the box. You know me, I mean, I do take them out of the box, but I want a kind of nice box. I don't need the most perfect box, but uh, I was a little bit, again, I only paid 15 so it's not like I paid on eBay and I destroyed it. I got it for the retail price at the booth, so I was so happy to get those. So day one was really awesome. I had a ton of fun filming the booths. I actually got some really cool stuff. I spent way too much money. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to spend anything because I didn't think I was going to buy Funko Pops. Okay, so day two was family day. I went there with the cool kid and his mom. And normally, I mean, he's a kid, so the first thing he wants is he wants to go buy stuff. He wants to buy toys. So I gave him a budget. He had about 50 bucks he could spend. And we decided to go do that first before we did any, like, the fun booths. First, we went to the Imagine X booth, which is on one side of the con. And they were giving away free blind bags. So I grabbed one. He grabbed one. And my wife grabbed one. So he got three Imagine X blind bags. I know he got two Sinestros. I forget the third figure where he got. So he gave me the, his extra Sinestro. So we both got Sinatra. That was really cool. So we got to see that. He got to see the Bat Bot Extreme, which is a really cool toy. If you saw, I did the booth tour a couple days ago. But then we walked all the way to the other side of the con where the old toys and the vintage toys are. And by then he was tired. He was ready to go home after the first aisle. He was like, Daddy, can we go home now? I'm tired. <laughs> so uh, we ended up getting some food and re-energized him. All right, so day two when I was going through the vintage stuff, I didn't think I was going to buy anything because normally the prices are really high. It's like eBay times 1.5. So it's like 30 bucks on eBay, 45 at the con. So I'm just like, no way. I'm not buying anything. I usually try to find the cool kid was looking for loose figures so we could get something a little bit cheaper so he could get more things. Uh, I think he ended up buying some superhero squad figures, some Spider-Man, a Spider-Man action figure. Oh, a whole set of the Smurf Funko Pops. He got all seven of them. So he's so happy. I had one vendor that was selling them for $7 each three for 20 so we bought three for 20 and then we said why not and i talked him into giving me the last two that he needed for six bucks each so i personally didn't think i was going to buy anything but then i started finding some deals so i found this really cute one piece q posket figure she was 10 bucks i mean normal retail on these are like 25 to 30 and i really like the way they look they kind of have the pull-up doll big head look which i really like and so I saw it for 10 bucks. I was like, I have to buy that. I have a Sailor Moon one and I'll buy the rest if I can find them for 10 bucks. At $10, I, my resistance goes away. <laughs> and she just, she's really cute. Really cute figure for 10 bucks. Yeah, the first time I saw them was, I think two or three years ago at Comic-Con. Uh, Band Presto had a big display of them and I really, really wanted them since. But uh, at the time they were 30, I think, and I didn't want to spend 30. But if I could find them for 10 bucks. I mean, the last one, the Sailor Moon I bought, from GameStop for 15 when they were doing their 50% sale last January. So I was really happy you picked that up. And then the same booth, they, everything was slashed. And from the same booth, I found this whole Hikari for 20 bucks. You know me, I love my Hikaris and 20 bucks, I just could not resist that. I don't have this one. I think I had the gray glitter one and I have uh, a regular green one, but I didn't have the red one. So I was like, 20 bucks, I just can't resist. I was actually, at that point, then I started looking for Hikari and a lot of booths had them at full price, 65, 85. So I wasn't able to find any others. I saw one booth that had the purple Jack Skeleton for 25. I almost bought it, but I decided I have to, you know, I gotta hold back a little bit, but I got this. I was so happy to get him. So that in the coupon get 30 bucks, such a great deal. And the next, uh, one of the things we were looking for was Young Justice figures. Because I love Young Justice and my son loves Young Justice. We're super excited that Netflix is going to do a third season. So we like looking for the toys. A bunch of the figures come with pieces to put together a Hall of Justice. So he kind of wanted to find the rest of the figures. He has four or five of them. So we were looking for Young Justice and we walked by this one booth. I didn't see anything. I walked by then my wife was like, hey, isn't that Young Justice over there? So they had Young Justice. They had the set that I wanted the most. The... Miss Martian Martian Manhunter set. 
So he had that set. So I asked him, how much is the set? He said, uh, I think he said 15 bucks. But he had another set. The Roz Al Ghul and Cheshire set. Now this set, I think it's cheaper online. The Miss Martian set and Martian Manhunter they sent, I think it goes for 40 to 50 online. So that one's harder. I was really excited to see that because I know I've been bidding on it for like a year. And this set was I could get for 10 or 15. So I asked him, well, how much for both? He's like, you know what? If you take both, I'll do 10 bucks a piece. <laughs> I was like, okay, deal time. <laughs> so he had up on the wall, this triple set with Starfire, Raven, and Captain Boomerang. So I was like, okay, well, how much are those? He's like, well, those are 15 each, but since you're buying the other two, I'll do 12 bucks. So it's like 12 bucks for a cool triple figure set like that. Okay, I'll take that. I said, okay, then well, how about the last set? So you had one more set, which was the Black Adam, Captain Marvel, Shazam, and Mary Batson set. So he did 12 bucks a piece for these two sets, which was great because everywhere else in the con, people were charging $20, $30 for these sets. So I paid 44 bucks for those four sets. So happy to pick those up. I think that was a great price. So I was like, I was getting really excited and my wife was getting a little annoyed because now we had these big bags we were carrying and we were supposed to just buy little things so we didn't have to carry everything around. <laughs> So then I was like, okay, I'm gonna find stuff. Okay, so I was walking around and my wife spotted one of these superhero squad sets. The guy wanted five bucks. It was like in a $5 bucket. So I grabbed that. Now I really like the toys and the figures from like the early to mid 2000s. Cause this stuff right now is cheap. No one wants it. It's out of style, out of demand. The kids who played with it in 2006, they're like 18 to 20 right now. So they're in college, finishing high school. So they're not buying this stuff yet. So now is a perfect time. The next two to five years, anything from the mid 2000s, buy it. If you like it, buy it because it's cheap. But give it five to 10 years from now is when the people that grew up with this stuff will start coming to age where they want to start buying it for nostalgia reasons. They'll remember getting it for Christmas. They'll remember playing with it. So I like collecting this stuff because I, I like the figures. I love the way they look. They're just really fun and cute. And I've been collecting them for years, but they're still cheap. So you can go find this stuff in the $5 bins. You can find them everywhere. No one is looking for this stuff. But trust me, in five to 10 years, this will start being the stuff that's in display cases for 20, 30. Now, the Cyclops is kind of out of the package. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get like a, maybe remove the tape and sort of fix it back in place. But I like these. So I want to get them before they're too expensive. I doubt I'll sell them when they go up in value. But so many toys I've collected over the years, I've collected when they're off. It's 10 years after they come out is the best time to buy most toys. Because that'll be the time frame when, well, especially kids toys. Toys are aimed at the adult audience. They'll go up in value usually right away and then they kind of maintain that value. But for kids toys, they don't really go up into a high demand value until about 10 to 15 years after they got. Once people are kind of out of college and before they're getting married and having children is when they'll start spending money on the toys they grew up with. So I saw that, that's really cool. I love collecting those. And then I found another guy that had buckets of $5 toys and I found more. So I was digging through the guy's $5 bucket and I found a Combat Hero G.I. Joe set. Serpenter and Beachhead. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I was looking and I dug through it and I found more. I found Cobra Commander and Roblox. Now I'm a child of the 80s, so this stuff speaks to me. Some of you guys probably don't care about G.I. Joe, but when I see G.I. Joe, I'm just like, oh, I love it. I love it. It just reminds me of being a kid and going to Toys R Us 1984 and buying, I went, I think my mom gave me 20 bucks or I had $20 for my birthday or something. I went and I bought like eight G.I. Joe figures. I, and I, it was just the best experience. So every time I see G.I. Joe, it just reminds me of being that eight year old kid buying the figures and enjoying it. So I got that. And then the guy had the Snake Eyes Artan set and he had the Destro Scarlet set. Now this was my favorite set because I love both Scarlet and Destro, two of my favorite characters. So I was like, oh man. And then I found the Cobra Commander Duke set. This one was a little bit falling off the card, but I was all right with that. I mean, remember, he had them at five bucks a piece. That's a great price. And then we had Flint and Baroness. Oh, so cool. And what is this? We got uh, Storm Shadow and Barbecue. And then the last set was uh, Firefly and Bazooka. Oh, so cool. So he had eight sets. I asked him, I said, if I buy all eight, well, actually, I had seven sets. I said, if I buy all seven, will you do four bucks a piece? He's like, I got one more. He pulls it off the wall. 
He says, I'll do four bucks a piece if you buy all eight. I was like, yes, sold. <laughs> so it was 32 bucks for eight sets. So happy. I think if I bought these on eBay with shipping, it probably would have cost me like 10 bucks a piece. So I was happy. I'm, I was finding deals. Honestly, I didn't think I was going to buy anything. And I was just loading up with that day. Okay, so after we went through all the vintage area, we went through as much as we could. But he, my son was getting bored. He was hungry and a little cranky. So we had to go get some food. And then he really wanted to see the danger boat. Because I told him that the Amazon has set up this giant danger boat for the Tick Series that you can go into. And he was dying. He's like, Daddy, danger boat. Danger boat time. Danger boat time. So we went to the danger boat. The line was really long because they were like filming some press stuff inside. And we had to wait. He was getting antsy. But once we got into the danger boat, it was awesome. Here, let me show you a little clip of him getting excited for the Hello, danger boat. Guys. And look what we're going to do. Go to the danger boat. I'm a danger boat. I'm a danger boat. Oh, yeah. I'm a danger boat. I'm a danger boat. Oh, yeah. I'm a danger boat. I'm a danger boat. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. oh, yeah. I'm a danger boat. Oh, yeah. I'm a danger boat. Oh, yeah. I'm a danger boat. So I'm a danger boat. Bye. <laughs> So I'll do a full tour of the danger boat tomorrow or in a couple days so you can see what it looks like inside. But the coolest thing inside, I mean, it was awesome. They had uh, like a camera inside that would look at you and you, it, would have, it had the danger boat voice. So it would actually interact with you and talk to you and be like, hello, I am danger boat. What's your name? And then you say your name is like, hello there. And then it would like ask you to do things. And then like one panel you could put on the danger boat music. The danger boat. Danger boat. <laughs> so cool. So we had fun. And then you had to find this one thing where they had a faux ham dispenser and you have to hit the button or you scanned your tag and the phone ham would come out and you it would open up and you would have to get it ah oh, so cool so what we got was this really funny can called faux ham so it's like a fake ham and it's got all kinds of like jokes on it and it, <laughs> it's actually got like it looks like actual faux ham so it's kind of like a fake prop from the show oh so awesome and then when you open it up you get this really cool set of tick lapel pins. Ah, oh, so awesome. It's neat, as it says right on there. Neat. So we each got one of these. So happy, and it was free. It was, if you got in line, you waited, you could get it. I'm sure people went in the danger boat and probably didn't get it, because it's kind of, you had to know to actually hit the button to get it. So cool. So I love it, and the cool kid, well, actually the cool kid was kind of sad, because he was hungry by the time we were, <laughs> we had waited, we got a snack, then we waited a long time to get on the boat. By the time we got in the boat again, he was hungry again. So he thought there was actual ham in there. So he was kind of disappointed that there wasn't actually ham. <laughs> he was ready to eat it. But uh, he was ha afterwards, he was happy. He, he has a cool tick pin to put on his jacket. Very cool. So the last thing I did was I went back to that table I saw the first day with the vintage stuff. And I picked up something that I've actually been looking for for a long time, just for a good price. So I picked up a, he's mint in the box, but the box is open. So the figure's mint, but the box is a little bit worn. But it was a Baron Karza Micronaut figure. I love the Micronauts. They're just so cool. And you know me, I love robots. He's such a cool looking robot. He's complete in the box. Let me take him out. So he had him marked at 60 bucks. So I didn't buy it the first day I saw it, but I went back. I said, will you take 50? He said, yeah, I'll take 50. I'm not sure if it was missing anything. It has a little instruction booklet in it. I, this is a condition of older toys I love because it's not mint sealed. So it's a little bit cheaper, but it's complete. So you can, it's kind of like the Funko Pops where you can take the figure out, enjoy the figure, put it back in, enjoy the mint and box look. So you get the best of both worlds. I love collecting figures like that. Like G.I. Joe vehicles, when I can get a vehicle that's been opened but mint in the box, so I can have it displayed in the box, but I can also take it out and look at it. And the price is a fraction. You know, if it has that little bit of tape that's never been opened, I mean, you know, someone might pay $300. If it's been opened, but it's a mint inside, it might be $100 or 80 bucks. So that's how I love to collect because I don't really collect for the value. I collect because I love the stuff. I mean, obviously value is awesome if it goes up in value more than you paid. I just love having it. Now look how awesome he is. Uh, look how awesome he looks and you know you can put a missile in him and shoot the missiles i would love if funko did a funko pop of him he would look so cool
So as day two was winding down, I found my son and wife left early. They left at maybe like four o'clock because they were getting tired. I still wanted to go try to film a little bit. Bought that Micronaut figure, really happy to do that. And then I, it was almost over. I went to the Funko booth. I just wanted to see if they had any more standby or anything. And the standby line was closed. They were actually packing up. The cash registers were closed. I saw one of the managers. I was like, hey man, is standby still open? Can I buy anything? He's like, oh, well, the registers are closed. But I don't know if he recognized me from my channel or he saw that I had a pro pass on. He's like, you got cash? I'm like, yeah, I got cash. He's like, all right, I'll let you buy something really quick. What do you want? So I said... You know, I started here, there was still a lot of stuff left. So I got Jyn or so. Uh, you know, Rogue One, I love Star Wars. I didn't get all the Star Wars figures, but I wanted to get something. So I usually tend to get the female characters. So I got Jyn or so. I got one I really, really wanted, which was Lockjaw. Oh, he's flocked. He's from the Inhumans. I like the Inhumans. So happy to get Lockjaw. And he's so cool. Another one I really wanted was the Grandmaster. I really wanted to make sure I got all the Marvel Funko Pops this year. So I got Grandmaster. His paint just looks awesome. He's a really cool pop. I'll probably do one of my 21 unboxings of all the Comic-Con ones later this weekend, once I get through the booth tours. Then I got uh, Dengar, another Star Wars one I really wanted. I love all the figures that kind of look like the Kenner figures from the 70s and 80s. So I really wanted that one. That one was really cool. And I lucked out. I grabbed another Vincent. <laughs> so I was so sad the day before that I had crushed him. But I'm happy to get another one. So now I, I don't know what I'm going to do with the other one yet. But I'm just, I was happy to get one that's in good shape. And then the last one I got on day two was the Buffy two pack. So I was super happy to get the two pack. That was another one I really wanted. So, so far, I was pretty, after two days at Comic Con, I was doing pretty good. I got a couple of the Toy Tokyo ones, uh, a couple of the other ones. So I, in the past, I've had very bad luck at Comic Con. So this year, I was doing pretty good. Where am I at? I'm at 10 items from the Funko booth so happy about that but at the end of the day someone that i had met through facebook that watched my videos and we've been having like a friendly conversation for the last couple weeks so he got a funko spot on day two a lottery spot so not only did i get those funko pops that i i wanted in the standby line but then this guy that i've been talking with on facebook that met you know he saw my he liked my videos he wanted to visit my store he got me a couple of my top wants or some of the stuff I was able to get. So super awesome. I'll, I'll have a video with him tomorrow where he met me in my store and he, he it, it just, it's a whole fun conversation and a whole fun trade that we had. My new friend that I've met through Facebook and through YouTube, he hooked me up with some of the better Funko Pops. Uh, I didn't get them until later in the week, but on Thursday, on Thursday, I got all the ones from the Funko booth. Friday, I got all the ones on Funko Booth, and I learned that I also got a couple of the Toy Tokyo ones I wanted, and, uh, and a limited one, so I was really ex excited for that. He got the Statue of Liberty, so that's pretty cool. I didn't get it. I'm going to try to get it. I know a lot of people have been asking me. It's limited to 6000 though, so don't freak out. It's going for like 80 bucks right now, but the Statue of Liberty, I'm pretty sure it will be around 40 45 bucks in a couple months, because 6000 is not that limited. I've purchased plenty of Friendly Funkos for 50 bucks that are like... 500 or under limited so so wait for the hype to calm down and a statue of liberty will be available okay so after day two i spent way too much money and i was broke i didn't want to spend any more money but i just i wanted to have something on me just in case so my wife you know she took money out of the drawer from our store from the day before she's like try not to spend it but here you go so i had 130 bucks on me so you know this is saturday saturday's the super busy day so i figured i tried to do mostly booth tour filming i wasn't expecting to buy anything so i'm walking you know walking to the subway and walking down look across the street and I see a guy selling comic books. So I was just like, uh, I was walking, I was like, okay, I gotta just see what he has just in case. So I cross the street, I look at his comic books and he has old Bronze Age comic books. And I I see an Iron Man 55. He has it marked at 200 bucks. 200 bucks is actually a really good price for that. But I only had 130 on me. I'm like, oh my God, I should buy this. So I was just thinking, oh, I'm kind of interested in this. You know, I was talking, I was like, I'm kind of interested in this. Is this your best price? He said, uh, I, I can go down to 150. I think it was just stuff he either had as a kid or he got it like clearing out something. So, I mean, obviously all the comics look like they had been, um, you know, they, they weren't like from a collector. It looked like something he just had for a long time. So, oh, in my head, I'm like, I can't afford 150. I only got 130. So I was like, we take 100? And he was like, yeah, meet me in the middle, 125. I was like, okay. <laughs> I can't believe it. I bought an Iron Man 55 mid-grade. It's like a four to five. 
you know, like a very good plus the fine minus, $125. I'm going to Comic-Con and I find a great deal before Comic-Con. I, I can't, and this is in my own neighborhood. This wasn't near the Javits Center. Uh, so it's, you know, it flows. It's got a little bit of, I don't know if you can see like a little bit of sticker goo or something that might be able to clean off right there. And the staples look slightly oxidized. I don't know if you can see that. Not really though, but it's got a little bit of tanning and a little bit of staining or dirt on it. But it's a beautiful copy. I have other copies. I actually have two other copies of this, but my other copies are in worse shape. So this is an upgrade for me. So I might actually, I mean, I paid a good price on this. I might actually be able to sell one of my other two and actually make a profit and upgrade at the same time. Now it's biggest flaw is on the back cover, which I'll show you. Oh, she's so beautiful. There's like no major creases or tears or anything except for on the back, there's like a one quarter size, half quarter size chunk that looked like it got ripped out. Probably just from age or brittle. But other than that, there's no major tears or creasing. It's just a little bit stained. It's relatively flat. I, like I wouldn't even get this pressed because it doesn't look like there's maybe over right here, like a little bit of a crease that might press out a little bit. It's mostly just got some staining or dirt. It looks like it was probably not bagged and boarded. It was just sitting on in a pile or something. I, I can't believe I found this on the way to Comic-Con, but I, at that point I was broke. <laughs> I didn't have any money to spend. <laughs> so day three, I went to Comic-Con. I walked all over. I had already bought that, so I was already out of cash. So I did a bunch of booth tours, but I did end up, I used my debit card. So I did buy a couple things that day. Okay, so I was filming the Toy Tokyo booth and it was really cool this year because in the past they were selling their Funko Pops in their booth. So you can never really, I mean, you can get into their display case, but it was a crazy line and all that. So you couldn't buy any of their art toys. But this year I saw this, this box is amazing. Look at the box art on this thing. When I saw the figure in the case, I just, I fell in love with this figure. So I ended up buying this one, but it was really cool because I didn't have to wait in line. There was no line. I could buy the art toys because all the Toy Tokyo stuff was being sold in the Funko booth, all the Funko Pop exclusives. So I was able to get this Ayogi. Is that how you say his name? Forget how you say his name. But I just, this box art, just, it's beautiful. I love sci-fi toys and this alien guy. And I asked the guy and they said they only bought like, 15 to 20 something like that to comic-con so i don't know how limited this guy is but i'm sure he's way more limited than any of the funko stuff okay so if you take off the lid the lid slides right off so that's really cool he's easy to open and display in the box there's um like a burlap sack which i thought was kind of interesting and then he's in uh, like straw and then the figure itself is in a plastic bag. I love the packaging. This packaging is just so much fun to me. So like Funko Pops, you can take him out of the box, enjoy him, and then you can put him back away in the box if you want. I love toys like that because, oh, he's so awesome. So Ayagi, I don't know how limited he is, but I think it's less than 100 in this color version. So he's kind of like the Hikari's would be similar to this size. And I, by his vinyl, you can pose him a little bit. Uh, his legs aren't puzzled, just his arms. But, ah, uh, beautiful. I love aliens and creatures and monsters. He was 50 bucks, I believe. I mean, you get a pop ride, it's like 50 bucks. So, and he's way more limited. Now, obviously, the demand's not there for a figure like this. But for my collection, I absolutely love vinyl figures like this. I've been collecting them long before Funko Pops, probably from the mid 2000s, like 2004, 2005. I started collecting vinyl figures. So I absolutely, I fell in love with this guy when I was filming the booth and I would love to collect way more vinyl figures like this. I sometimes I feel like I buy too many Funko Pops when I rather have one of these guys than like three Funko Pops. I love Funko Pops too, because Funko Pops are also vinyl figures. It's the same thing. It's a stylized vinyl figure, but Funko Pops have their own style and he has his own style. Oh, I love it. Mm, he's got that nice vinyl smell too. I love it. He's so cool. See, he's next to a pop. He's that size, so if you wanna see. Oh, I'll go get you. <laughs> Let me put him, see, and then you could just, when you're done, you can have them out of display, and then if you want to put it away back in this box, back in the bag, back in his hay, put the bag. I guess it's uh, 
Pop Life makes these figures. This one says it's a limited edition for Comic Con. I think I'm going to be looking into this company to see what else they've made because I just I love this figure. It's so amazing to me. I would really get like one of these a week, then two or three pops. I think. I mean, I love pops too. I'm not saying I don't want pops. I'm just saying is I think this is a cooler figure. That's, this is just me. I know some of you guys love pops no matter what, but I just I love the box and everything of this guy. Awesome. All right. So after I filmed the Toy Tokyo booth. I wanted to go around to more of the art toy stands because I, I, that's one of my favorite parts of Comic-Con. This year it was smaller, but I think that's because of construction. I'm hoping it's bigger next year. But I love the art toy area because you see all these unique toys that you don't see elsewhere. So it's to me, it's more of a fun, unique experience because I'm getting to experience something that I wouldn't get to sell. Whereas Funko Pops, you kind of see everywhere. So it's not as fun as unique to see the Funko Pops at Comic-Con as it is the art toys. A lot of them are limited to a few hundred or one of a kind pieces of art. So I, you know, I bought the alien figure from Toy Tokyo, but I also, I went to, I believe it was the Toy Cube booth. And as I was filming it, I realized that the artist who made, there was this, uh, like Pinocchio figure statue that the artist had made a stop motion movie about two years ago when he constructed it. I loved the video. I watched it over and over again. I think it was posted in either in one of my doll groups or one of the Funko groups I'm in. I love it. So I realized the artist who did that video and the figure was there was doing a signing. So I got him. He signed the postcard for me. Oh, so happy to get that. I wasn't expecting that. He was really friendly. He was really nice. What's his name? Jim. See, I didn't even know his name because Jim McKenzie. I wasn't even expecting to see him. But then when I realized it was this is his figure that he designed. I love that video. So it was really fun to meet him. And I love he did a little doodle for me on the card. So that was awesome. So at the end of day three, uh, I I locked, I didn't have any luck on the Funko line. I wasn't able to find anyone I knew, and I didn't get any Funkos on day three. But that's okay. I already got so many on the first two days. I was pretty happy. The other thing I bought on day three was this fun children's book. I read it to the cool kid. He loved it. It's about a robot going to a weird city where the ruler of the city is kind of a dictator. I thought it was a really fun book, and for it was five bucks. I figured the publisher was having a special deal on it. I gave it a try and I really like it. I think $5 is a great price for a hardcover children's book. Very cool. Okay, so day four is the last day for Comic-Con. I wasn't expecting to buy too much just because I've already spent way too much money. Uh, I already got a bunch of Funko stuff and uh, I just wanted to film. So I went and I filmed as many of the other booths that I missed that I wanted to get done. Okay, so while I was going around trying to get those last few booths that I missed out, I bumped into the Cryptozoic booth and I completely forgot they were there this year. And I really like their statues and figures. You know me, I collect the female superheroes. So I filmed their booth. I loved everything they had to display. And then I bought the New York Comic Con Wonder Woman in pink. She's limited to 750. They had her for 44 bucks. I kind of compared a couple of the paint jobs were a little bit messed up. So I compared, I found the best one I could find. And I'm really happy to have her. I actually don't have any of these statues yet. So I really wanted to get the New York Comic Con one and I kind of she's kind of awesome I kind of want to get the rest of them definitely something I want to start getting into because I just I love the way she looks I love that the way she's standing on a bomb I will probably sometime next week take her out and do like a in-depth review of her but she's awesome she's super awesome so after I filmed all the booths I decided to go back to the other side of Comic-Con where the guy who sold me the Micronauts figure was. Because there was a couple other things I wanted that he had. And I figured since it was towards the end of the con on the last day, almost at 5 o'clock, I figured he would negotiate. Okay, so while I was walking over to the guy that sold vintage stuff, I saw a guy who had $5 Funko Pops. So I grabbed this random gym with gnome. I don't really know anything about Troll Hunters, but I love Funko Pops that come with little teeny guys. So there's like a little gnome on the side. So I was like, ah, oh, for five bucks, I'll grab them. I thought that was pretty cool. I went back to the guy who I bought the Micronaut figure from because he had another one. He had the horse. And uh, I asked him how much it was. He said 60 bucks, which was the same price as the other one that I bought. I had talked him down to 50 on the other one. But since this was towards the end of the day and the last day, I thought maybe he'll budge a little bit. So I offered him 40. He came back to me at 45 and I agreed to that. So I'm so happy. This is the second Micronauts. I definitely think I want to go to more toy shows and collectible shows because I'd rather try to find them in person where I could look at them and see if they're complete and get them for a little bit better price because eBay was shipping and everything. It's getting kind of expensive. So I'm really happy. I'm happy that I actually got a couple of 70s vintage toys. That to me is awesome. And also, 
I bought this cute little, uh, what is it called? Huggle, Huggles. Huggles little girl doll inside uh, this like frame. I thought that was really cool. I've actually seen these before and always kind of wanted to collect them, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money on them. I saw it on the first day and I asked him, he said 25 bucks. I didn't want to pay $25. I said, you know, I'm comfortable at 10. He said, well, I don't know what it's worth, but I want to try to get 20, 25 for it. So I said, how about, okay, at the end of the show, if you still have it, will you consider 10? He said, yeah, if I can't sell it within four days, I'll consider 10. So I went back and he still had it. So I gave him 10 bucks. So I got that and I got the Andromeda horse for 55. And this is complete. It has in a tray. The box is a little bit worn, but again, I love toys like this where it's mint in the box. The box doesn't have to be perfect mint, but I can have it both ways. I can enjoy it mint in the box. In, in a, it's not a sealed box, but I get the same sealed appearance by having it in the box, or I can take it out and display it. And I love collecting it because it's a little cheaper that way. And you kind of still get to enjoy the toy fully. You get the toy, you get the box, you get the toy. I love it. Oh, so cool. I'm so happy that I picked up some fun vintage stuff. Well, at Comic-Con, I thought I was only going to be buying Funko Pops. If that, I didn't even know if I was going to buy Funko Pops. So, very awesome. Okay, so after I bought that vintage stuff from that guy, so happy to get some more vintage stuff, I figured I would just go back to the Funko booth just to see if there's a standby line. Now, I got there, and they said the line was closed. It was like 4 o'clock, maybe. And they wouldn't let anyone in the standby line. Comic-Con people kept on saying, God, keep moving. You can't stand... So I kept on walking. I walked around three or four times. I actually bumped into someone who recognized me, which was cool. We had a quick little conversation. And then I looped around a little bit more. And after looping around a few times, I was kind of giving up. The line was opening up. And then I was, as I was walking by, I noticed, I was like, I know that guy. I, I saw Sean from the New York Funko Popaholics group getting some stuff. So I yelled out. I said, hey, Sean, can you grab me an old man Logan? He's like, yeah, yeah, sure. I can do that for you. So he got it for me. Yes. I think I got all the Marvel Funko Pop. Oh, so happy to get him. Very awesome. So I was really happy he was grabbing it, but then I saw he was getting the black and gold Dragon Zord. And I didn't know they had any more because they weren't on the shelf, but they had a box of them. They had a couple boxes of them, so they were pulling them out. So I was like, oh my God. I was like, hey, Sean, can you get me one of those too? Because he was buying one of those. I think he was buying a couple because he wanted to trade them. And so he said, yeah, sure. And so he got me that as well. Oh man, I am so happy. This was another one. I wanted all the Toy Tokyo ones. So I believe I will have all the Toy Tokyo ones by the time I'm done with everyone. Oh, so thank you, Sean. I really appreciate it. I, I can't believe I got him. I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to get him. So I'm just, I'm so happy. So that was the end of all my, my haul. All right, so if you enjoyed my big Mega Comic Con haul, please give me a thumbs up. If you like my videos and this is the first time you're here, please subscribe to my channel. I love making videos for my subscribers. And if you guys see me in person while on Comic-Con, don't be afraid to meet me. I'm the shy guy. You don't have to be shy. Just come up to me and be like, hey, man, I like your videos. I'll be happy to talk with you and talk about toys, collecting, give you tips, whatever. I, it was a lot of fun meeting you guys while at Comic-Con. Let me sum up everything that I got during Comic-Con right here. Bye! Bye.